Hello, cadets. It's Dr. Cook here again. Today, we're going to talk about the area of operations overlay. All right, so let's start with just what goes on in overlay. This should be review from MS100. All right, so here is a map with an overlay all laid over it. All right, and we've got all the appropriate markings on there. But uh, let's break this down a little bit. Let me take the map off for you. All right, so here is just the overlay material and the things we need to have on every overlay, no matter what we're using it for. All right, we always want to have our two crosshairs with our grid line indexes on them, or numbers, to tell us where they go. All right, that's what helps us orient our map. We got to have our north seeking arrow. We always want to have classifications, top and bottom of the page. And then we need the information block, all right, with the name and purpose of the overlay the map reference that someone knows what map this goes with, uh, who did it, right? So that's your name usually if you're the one filling it out. The date time group, so we know which one it is. Is it current? Do is If I find two of them, which one's the newer one that I need to go by? And then we should put a classification on the information block. So this whole information block needs to be there. All right, and that's everything you should have in an overlay. Hopefully that's nothing new to you. All right, this is just an example of what an area of operations overlay looks like. All right, so that's the kind of product that you're trying to produce. On here, here are the things that you need to make sure you put on the area of operations overlay. All right, first thing, it always goes in black. All of these things are in black, and the, it is very helpful that in a lot of ways your AO overlay comes from higher, right? Um, at the platoon level, there's usually not much left for you to add to it. Um, so known current positions of things, known objectives, all right? Your platoon, company, or battalion boundaries, so all the, that's what defines the actual area of operations that you can work inside of, is the boundaries that your hire gave you. Any significant routes, especially named routes that your company commander gave you, and any significant phase lines that are common to everybody. All right, you wanna have those on there uh, so that your soldiers have those references of where they are. All right, so if we come back to our example here, we can talk about some of this. So. We've got some of these known points on here, like uh, that's probably a release point. There's some checkpoints on here, all right? We've got all of our boundary lines. So here's a platoon boundary line between first and third. Here's a platoon boundary line between third and second. We've got the company boundaries uh, out here on the top and bottom of this. We've got our known routes, all right? Here is one of our labeled routes. Um, it looks like that might have a route name there going between all of our checkpoints that we're gonna follow. The objectives are labeled on here, all right? Uh, the assembly area is where we are now. And then of course we've got our markings that are supposed to have like a north seeking arrow, our two points. Um, it looks like this doesn't have an information block or maybe it's cut off the, the page somewhere. So that would be an improvement for whoever made this example up. All right, so that's about it for the area of operations overlay. All right, make sure you get those five items on there, put those down in your notes, and uh, it's really pretty basic. We're just laying out our boundaries, our routes, and all of our graphic controls, uh, mostly that come from higher. All right, have a good day.